Hi, and welcome back to my tutorial on post work. This is Karen, also known as Care Boost Boutique, and um, I'm excited because we here we are finally in Photoshop. Yay! So we have all of our renders done that we needed to um, to bring in here to do our our post work, and I guess I'll just start with a few notes. First of all, I should apologize again for the fact that this is going to be um, choppy and there will be lots of pauses. Primarily because nobody ever watches me do post work. <laughs> it's a sort of a solitary thing. So I've never had to really stop and explain it as I go. Um, so I apologize for any awkward pauses and choppiness. Um, secondly, I'm using Photoshop CS6, but until fairly recently, I was using CS3. So I don't think there's anything in here that I'll be doing that isn't readily available in older versions of Photoshop. It might look a little different, but I'm pretty sure the functionality is all the same. In fact, you can probably do most, if not all, of this in GIMP as well, but I don't use GIMP, so you'd be kind of on your own um, for figuring out how that would all work. Um, and finally, I'm going to assume for the purposes of this tutorial that you know absolutely nothing about Photoshop, which is undoubtedly not true. I'm sure you know lots about Photoshop, but I think it would be better to explain something you already knew than to skip over something that you didn't. And I will not lie, there is oodles about Photoshop that I don't use and don't know how to use because, as previously stated, not a master painter by any stretch of the imagination. But there's lots that we can do without being a master painter. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you have been following along with the other tutorials, you will know that we have done a render in Daz Studio, and we have done a render in Poser. And then we've done a lot of other uh, renders, in fact, three in each case, uh, in addition to these renders, one with our Z-Depth map, one with our um, occlusion, and then we've done some mask layers where we will be able to use those to define the edges in our various um, pictures. I suppose before I go too much further, I should explain a little bit about my layout here in Photoshop, my, my workspace. Um, some of the most important things that I have open all the time are my history, which is a great easy way of doing and undoing. You can set the number of history states, I'm sure you know this already, but just in case, under preferences, I believe performance, yes. So you can set how many undo, how many history states that you have. I have mine set at 101 because I have lots of memory in my computer and not enough in my brain, <laughs> so it uh, makes it easy to sort of step back and undo something. Um, I also have my Adjustments tab open and my Layers tab. Those are the ones that I use most frequently. You can find all of them here in the Window um, pull-down menu. I also have off-screen to the other ones that I use even more commonly. I have my Brushes tab and my Actions tab, and I have those available on my other screen because I use them very frequently. Um, so I have them wide open and ready to go, but out of the way so that I can continue to work um, with uh, most of my space being dedicated to the pictures that I'm making. Um, uh, well, I guess that's it. Let's get started. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import our different layers I don't want to open. I want to place uh, each layer on top of its respective uh, base render. And because each of these are the same size, that's just the thumbnail. If I hover over each of these, you can see the dimensions are the same on all of my different renders. Uh, and as a result, when I place them, I'll just pick one of them here, um, Photoshop just automatically plunks it down right in place. I just right click, place, and I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to place, that was the occlusion, I am going to place the Z-depth. And this was the one with the transparencies. And I'm going to place the mask layer. And so there they are, all one right on top of the other. Um, you probably notice that when you place a layer in Photoshop, it adds it as a smart object, which has, it, it gives you the ability to sort of uh, manipulate each layer independently in Photoshop. It does some cool stuff, but I don't use it. I like my objects to be dumb <laughs> because I, I sort of work with them organically all as in one part of my document. So um, 
to make it easier for me to do things like adjusting brightness and contrast and um, levels and curves, I will select all of the layers I just placed. So I'm just going to shift click. And then um, if you right click over here, one of the options is to rasterize the layers, which pretty much means they're not smart anymore. Now they're just pixels. And then while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing in the um, poser render. My occlusion layer, my Z depth layer, the one with the transparencies, and my mask. And then shift click, rasterize. All right. So quite possibly the most powerful part of Photoshop is the ability to create and uh, manipulate different layers. It not only allows you to um, have different parts of your image interact with each other, but it gives you a chance to sort of save an original before you go ahead and, um, and start to make alterations. So between your history states and all of your layers, you have a lot of flexibility to sort of go back and undo something if you don't like it. Um, so just to get started, I'll show both of these images um, at the beginning, just because there's a slight difference uh, between our poser output that, that we're bringing into Photoshop and our DS stuff. Um, and the biggest difference by far is in that occlusion layer. So this, um, which we took out of poser, is a true occlusion render pass. The render engine only rendered the places where um, there was geometry close enough to each other to create those shadows. In Daz Studio, we kind of had to fake it a little bit. We turned everything white and we rendered it. And you can see that's the same basic idea. But of course, the um, poser version of is is far more washed out because this is this is truly what the shadowing looks like now depending on your preferences um, you can you can do a lot of different things with uh, with this occlusion layer let me just explain so again remember how I said that we can um, easily adjust things and, and save an original copy so I'm going to save that original um, uh, raw render, and I'm going to start working on a duplicate of it. So here is my duplicate. Every time I sort of start something, I drag it to the top. Now I'm going to drag that occlusion layer on top of it. And um, in the Layers tab, you have the ability to change how things are blended one on top of the other. So you can imagine that everything on top, you look through to see what's underneath it. And right now, um, this occlusion layer is set at 100% opaque, and normal blending means it's pretty much just sitting there. Uh, you probably already know this, but you could make it less opaque. You can kind of see, you know, how it could be 100% opaque or completely invisible or any amount in between. Um, and that's important. We use that opacity feature a lot. The other thing that's important is this blending mode. I am going to go ahead and each one of these does something slightly different, and I encourage you to sort of play around with them. But the ones that I use most frequently are Multiply and Screen. Multiply works when you have something dark uh, and an upper layer that you want to appear um, on the layers underneath it. So it, in terms of multiplication, like the math multiply, we know that if we take something and multiply it by zero, it goes away. So you can think of, for the purposes of this um, rendering um, layer, when I use multiply, anything that's white goes away. It's essentially multiplying by zero. White is sort of like the zero of this. So when I hit that um, to multiply, suddenly all the white stuff goes away, and all you're left with is, is the shadowy parts of that. So if I just blink this off for a second, you'll see what an astonishing difference that makes. Um, you'll also see that it's very, very dark. Because remember, if I put this back to normal, in Daz Studio, we actually rendered all of the geometry and not just the occlusion. In Poser, if we do the same thing, duplicate my base layer, drag it to the top, 
put the occlusion layer over it and change it to multiply. You can see that it does a far more subtle effect and definitely more realistic. Now, if I wanted to increase the effect of this in, um, in Poser, I can duplicate that occlusion layer and you can see every time that I duplicate it, that shadowing keeps getting darker and darker. So each one of these, that's the render as it came out of the render engine. That's with the occlusion layer once, twice, three times. So really depending on the look that you're going for, uh, it's very easy to darken this up. Um, I think this might be a little extreme. So I'm just gonna get rid of a couple of those layers and leave the original one there. So in Daz Studio, because if I just um, leave it the way it is, it's a lot too shadowy. Um, I can always change it by adjusting how opaque it is, but probably a better method of doing so is to kind of try to make this occlusion layer in DS look more like the one that was in Poser. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can adjust the brightness and contrast, which is probably the easiest. Image, adjustments, brightness, and contrast. And I could do this with an adjustment layer, which we'll get to in a minute, but for this part, all I want to change is this occlusion layer. I don't want to change anything else, so I'm just going to do the image adjustment. And this brightness and contrast adjustment will only be applied to the active layer and not to anything underneath it. So I really just want to brighten it up um, and sort of lose some of that contrast. Now. Again, depending on the um, version of Photoshop that you're using, there's this Use Legacy check mark. The difference between them is that the newer version of Brightness Contrast is sort of smart in that it understands what, when you say brightness, you really want to brighten um, and you know how you want to contrast things. Legacy is sort of linear, meaning that if I click it, if I turn it all the way up to brightness, everything gets equally brighter, it, everything gets equally washed in white, whereas the non-legacy version, it pretty much just lightens up the light part. Um, this is kind of something that you'll do to taste, sort of decide what you want it to look like. Um, I f usually fiddle around here a little bit until I get something that I want. So that is using brightness and contrast, and you can see it now looks far closer to the original, um, uh, the, the, the true render pass that was just occlusion that we got out of Poser. Um, the other thing that you can do, and here's the beauty of um, histories, so if I go back to, and just undo that brightness contrast layer, go back to what this is, you can also adjust um, both either the levels or the curves. Levels is pretty, easy to use on a black and white image. Um, you get this sort of a graph of from dark to light, what, how much of each sort of variation in darkness and lightness that there is in your image. Um, and output levels, this gives the maximum darkness and the maximum brightness. So right now this is just sort of a measurement of where most of your scene lies. If I change this bottom part, I'm saying that the darkest any part of my scene can be is, is this color gray. And if I change the top part, I'm saying that the lightest any part of my screen could be is over here. Um, again, for the purposes of our uh, trying to turn this into an occlusion layer that looks more like an occlusion layer, you can kind of drag these little sliders around without getting too technical. I'm I'm a great fan of experimenting until you get the thing that you're looking for. Dragging this middle slider um, adjusts the balance of brightness and, and darkness in your scene. Um, you can sort of squash the amount of brightness and darkness in the screen together. Um, you can adjust where the midpoint is. So there's lots of different ways that you can make your occlusion layer look more like an actual occlusion pass. And I think that that seems pretty good to me. So now when we go to multiply, we get a shadow effect that is far less well, overkill than the original was. So that's what the render looked like 
and there it is with the shadows emphasized. Gives a little more depth. Now there might be places where it's a little too much, um, but we can fix that pretty easily in just a second here.